Hi everyone, welcome to my channel English Bites. Today, I'm going to teach you the different rules in using comma in a sentence. But before that, if you are new in this channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell in order to be updated with my next video, and of course, share na rin. Alright, rule number one. Use a comma before the conjunction to separate two independent clauses in a compound sentence. Ang sabi rito, gagamit tayo ng comma bago ang conjunction para ihiwalay ang dalawang independent clauses sa isang compound sentence. Now, we are going to use coordinating conjunctions in, in connecting two independent clauses. But, the conjunctions here we are going to use has an acronym FANBOYS. This acronym FANBOYS stands for F stands for FOR A stands for AND, N stands for NOR, B stands for BUT, O stands for OR, Y stands for YET, and S stands for SO. Alright, bago tayo magpatuloy, we need to study first the two kinds of clauses. We have independent clause and dependent clause. When we say independent clause, it is a clause that can stand alone. Ito ay isang clause na nakakapag-isa. In Filipino, this is called sugnay na nakapag-iisa. It expresses a complete thought. Ito ay nagpapahiwatig ng kumplitong idea o kaisipan. While dependent clause is a clause that cannot stand alone. In Filipino, ang tawag dito ay sugnay na di nakapag-iisa. It does not express a complete thought. Kaya ang tawag dito ay dependent clause Kasi siya ay dumidepende lang dito sa independent clause. Kailangan mo siyang idugtong dito sa independent clause para magkaroon ng kahulugan. Example, my mother loves singing. Alright, ito ay independent clause kasi siya ay may subject, my mother, at meron siyang predicate, love singing. While this one, when she is in the mood, ito ay walang subject. Kaya kapag ito lang, hindi mo siya maiintindihan kung anong ibig niyang sabihin. Kailangan idugtong mo siya rito sa independent clause para magkaroon siya ng kahulugan. Kaya ang tawag dito ay dependent clause. In other words, itong dependent clause ay tinatawag din na subordinate clause. At ito ay nakakaroon lang ng kahulugan, as I've said, kapag ito ay idinugtong mo dito sa my mother loves singing. Alright, katulad dito My mother loves singing. When she is in the mood. Siya ay simple sentence na. Now, dito naman sa compound sentence, we have an example here. Mary went to the mall yesterday. Ito ang ating unang independent clause. And then the other one is, she bought a new cell phone. Now, we have here two independent clauses joined by a, con uh, joined by a comma and a conjunction and. By the way, this conjunction is called coordinating conjunction. Now, let us compare this to this sentence. Mary went to the small, yeah, uh, I mean, Mary went to the mall yesterday and bought a new cell phone. Now, dito sa sentence na ito, meron tayong isang subject, Mary, pero dalawa ang ating verb phrase. Went to the mall yesterday at ito pang isa, bought a new cell phone. So, ito ay isang simple sentence lang kasi ang subject natin ay isa lang, itong Mary. While in the, in the first sentence, dalawa ang subject natin, Mary at saka itong she. At dalawa rin ang ating verb phrase, went to the mall yesterday, and the other one is, she bought a new cell phone. So, dito, ito ay compound sentence kasi dalawang independent clauses na pinagdugtong ng comma at and. While the second sentence, ay isa, ang, isa lang ang ating subject dito, although dalawa ang ating verb phrase, kaya ang tawag dito ay simple sentence lang. Next. Rule number two. Use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses in a series. Ang sabi rito, gagamit na tayo ng comma kapag tayo ay maghihiwalay ng tatlo o higit pang mga salita phrases, or clauses in a series. 
Alright, this is an example of words in a series. Cherries, grapes, apples, peaches, and oranges are my choice ingredients for a fruit salad. Notice, in this sentence, we have five words in a series. Lima ang ating word dito sa series na ito. Itong grape, uh, I mean cherries, grapes, apples, peaches, and oranges. So dahil lima ang ating words dito, ang gagamitin nating comma ay, I mean comma, ay apat lang. Itong comma after cherries, after grapes, after apples, after peaches. Now after peaches, gagamit tayo ng comma dito, pang apat na comma, and then space, don't forget the space, and then the coordinating conjunction and followed with the next word in a series. Alright, ganito ang paggamit ng comma sa sentence na may mga tatlo o higit pang words in a series. Next, examples of series of phrases. We reach our destination by train, by horses, and by foot. Now, dito meron tayong tatlong phrases by train, by horses, and by foot. Tatlo ang ating phrases dito, kaya gagamit tayo ng dalawa lang na comma. Dito, by train, by horses, another comma. Pagkatapos ng by horses, ay space pagkatapos coordinating conjunction and followed, by, followed with the next phrase, by foot. Now, example of series by clauses. The study shows that many victims had lost their relatives, that they had no money, and that they had suffered from malnutrition. Now, our phrases in this sentence are the following. Ang una, that many victims had lost their relatives, and then we use a comma. Next, that they had no money, and then comma, and then space. Notice here, pagkatapos ng mga comma rito, uh, yes, I mayroon tayong space and then followed with the next word. Okay, dito sa pangalawang comma, space again, and then conjunction and, and then space, and then following word. Now notice we have three clauses here. Uh, tatlo ang clauses natin, pero gagamit lang tayo ng dalawang comma. And then after the last comma, katulad nga sabi ko, I space and then conjunction and. Next, sometimes omission of the last comma leads to confusion. Kung minsan, pag tinatanggal daw yung katapusan comma, ay nakakaroon ng kalituhan. Okay, example of confusing sentence. The thick jungle, the smell of the flowers, and the wild bees made me smile. Alright, dito, Meron tayong tatlong series of uh, phrases, the thick jungle, the smell of the flowers, at itong the wild bees. Okay, the wild bees. Pero, isang comma lang ang ginamit. So, dahil tatlo ito, dapat dalawa ang comma ang ginamit dito. Kaya nakakaroon tuloy ng kalituhan, parang isang item lang itong the smell of the flowers and the wild bees. Parang isang item lang ito. When actually, these are two items. Now, here is the corrected sentence. The thick jungle, comma, the smell of the flowers, comma, and, remember, uh, now, take note, after this last comma, gamit tayo ng and, and then followed with the next item, the wild beast. Alright, ito na ang corrected na siya. Hindi na siya nakakalito. Kasi na separate na yung the smell of the flowers at saka yung the wild beast. Unlike the first sentence, itong the smell of the flowers at saka itong the wild beast ay parang iisang item lang. So, naghahatid ito ng kalituhan sa sentence. Next. Commas are not needed when conjunctions are used to separate all of the items in a series. Ang comma raw ay hindi kailangan kapag gumamit tayo ng conjunctions sa pagdudulay yung mga items sa series. Example, we want to go to the mall and play video games and watch movies. Now here, instead of using commas, in the, I mean, conjunction is used. Dito, sa halip na comma ang ginamit, ay coordinating conjunction ang ginamit. 
We want to go to the mall and play video games. Pagkatapos si another and. Alright, pag ganito, hindi na kailangan ang comma. Next, use a comma to separate adjectives of equal rank. Gagamit na tayo ng comma para ihiwalay ang dalawang adjectives of equal rank. Example, a tall, beautiful woman smiled at him. Dito, dalawang ating adjectives of equal rank, itong tall at beautiful. Paano natin malalaman na itong dalawang ito ay equal rank? Malalaman natin na ang dalawang ito ay equal rank kapag itong dalawang ito ay pwede nating pagdugtungin gamit ang conjunction na and. Like this one. A tall and beautiful woman smiled at him. Dito, gumamit tayo ng conjunction na and pero hindi na bago ang kahulugan sa sentence. Kaya dito, tama ang paggamit natin dito ng comma kasi ito ay equal rank. Do not use commas to separate adjectives that must stay in a specific order. Huwag daw tayong gagamit ng comma para ihiwalay ang dalawang adjectives na dapat ay nandun sa kanilang sarili sa tamang pagkakaayos. Example, most serious road accidents usually happen at midnight. Dito, may tatlo tayong series dito. Most serious, most serious, at saka road. Now, itong tatlong ito, hindi natin pwede silang pagpalit-palitin o paghiwahiwalayin o baguhin ng arrangement. Kasi, may iiba na ang kahulugan sa sentence. Kaya dito, dapat hindi tayo gagamit ng comma. Use a comma after an introductory word, phrase, or clause. Gagamit na tayo ng comma pagkatapos ng introductory word, phrase, or clause. Example, Well, it looks like your idea is correct. Now, in this sentence, our introductory word is the word well. Ito ang ating introductory word. Kaya gagamit tayo ng comma pagkatapos nito. And remember, pagkatapos ng comma, dapat mayroon tayong space dito. Next example, No, I think you are wrong. Ang ating introductory word ay itong word na no. And then after this word no, ay gagamit tayo ng comma, and then space again, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, oh, do you really mean it? Now, ang ating introductory word ay itong word na o. Oh. And then after that, we need to use comma here, and then continuation of the sentence. Now, next, examples of introductory words for nouns. Larry, why are you here? Alright, our introductory word here is the noun Larry. And then, take note, after the noun Larry, gagamit tayo ng comma, and then space again, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, Willie, you're late. Now again, pagkatapos ng noun na Willie, meron tayong comma, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Now, here are some examples of introductory words for common expressions. Example, of course, you are correct. Now, ang ating common expression dito ay itong expression na of course. And then after that, we need to use comma here, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, prepositional phrases of four or more words. Gagamit tayo ng comma dito. Alright. At the last bend, we stop to take a break. Now, ito ang ating prepositional phrase at the last bend. And then, comma after this prepositional phrase. And then, don't forget to place a space here after the comma and then continuation of the sentence. Okay, next example. In the last two pages, you will find the answer. Now, our prepositional phrase is in the last two pages. By the way, kaya natin ito tinawag na prepositional phrase kasi nag-uumpisa siya sa preposition na in. And then, don't forget, pagkatapos ng prepositional phrase ay gagamit tayo ng comma, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, participial phrases. Kaya natin ito tinawag na participial phrase kasi nag-uumpisa siya sa participle na posing. 
By the way, what kind of participle is this? This is called present participle kasi nag siya sa ing. Now, according to our rule, place a comma after participial phrases. So, in this sentence, we are going to place a comma here and then space and then continuation of the sentence. Next, broken into pieces, the mirror became useless. Now, dito sa sentence na to, ang ating, particip uh, ang ating participial phrase ay broken into pieces. Ang ito ay tinawag nating participial phrase kasi nag-uumpisa siya sa participle na broken. By the way, what kind of participle is this? This is called past participle kasi nag in siya sa en. This is an irregular verb. Kaya ito ay en siya. Now, according to our rule, Maglalagay tayo ng comma pagkatapos nitong participial phrase. And then, don't forget to put a space and then continuation of the sentence. Next, infinitive phrases. To get to the mall before it closed, Jerry hailed a taxi. Now, dito, our infinitive phrase is to get to the mall before it closed. According to our rule, gagamit tayo ng comma pagkatapos ng infinitive phrase and then continuation of the sentence. Now, kaya ito tinawag na infinitive phrase kasi nag-uumpisa siya dito sa infinitive na to followed with the verb get. Kaya ang tawag dito ay infinitive phrase. By the way, kapag itong sentence na ito ay binaliktad natin, nauna ang Jerry hailed a taxi, kasunod nitong to get, the to get to the mall before it closed, hindi na tayo gagamit ng comma. Kasi nauna na itong ating independent clause. Okay, next. To pass the board exam, comma, poll both lots of reviewers. By the way, kaya ito tinawag na infinitive phrase kasi nag-uumpisa na naman siya dito sa verb na to followed with the root word of the verb pass. Now, according to our rule, gagamit tayo ng comma kapag tayo gumamit ng infinitive phrase sa unahan ng sentence. And then, comma, followed with the space, and then continuation of the sentence. By the way, kapag ito na naman ay binaliktad natin, nauna itong independent clause, kasunod nitong infinitive phrase, hindi na tayo gagamit ng comma. Remember that. Now, for adverb phrases. When the right time comes, I will buy a new car. Now, ang ating adverb phrase ay itong when the right time comes. Now, ang tawag dito ay adverb phrase kasi nag-uumbisa siya dito sa adverb na when. This adverb when is called adverb of time. Now, according to our rule, af, we are going to use comma after adverb phrases like this. And then space after comma and then continuation of the sentence. Now, remember, kapag ito ay binaliktad natin, nauna itong independent clause na I will buy a new car. Tapos kasunod itong adverb phrase, hindi na tayo gagamit ng comma. Remember that. Next, if you want to pass the test, you should review your lessons. Now, ang ating adverb phrase ay if you want to pass the test. Ang tawag dito ay adverb phrase kasi nag-uumpisa siya dito sa word na if. Itong ganitong classing phrase ay tinatawag din natin na dependent clause or subordinate clause. Pati itong isa, when the right time comes. Ito ay dependent clause din. At pag ang sentence ay ganito ang pakakasulat, nauna ang dependent clause, kasunod ay independent clause, gagamit tayo ng comma rito. Pero kapag nauna ang independent clause, katulad dito, you should review your lessons and then followed with if you want to pass the test, then hindi na tayo gagamit ng comma. That is the rule. Next, rule number four. Use commas to set off parenthetical expressions. Example, the nouns of direct address. Please, Gemma, could you give me another chance? Now, notice here, our sentence is, please, could you give me another chance? Now, itong Gemma, this is only an inserted parenthetical expression, na noun. Now, notice here, Pagkalagay natin itong Gemma na ito, do not forget to place a comma after the first word place, please, and then comma, and then Gemma, and then 
place, comma again, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next. I will not do it again, Mr. Smith. Now, notice here, our parenthetical expression is Mr. Smith. Notice, before this, we need to place a comma here and then space. Next, for conjunctive adverbs. The main event, comma, therefore, comma, was cancelled. Our conjunctive adverb here is the word therefore. Ito ang ating conjunctive adverb. Now, notice, ito ay inserted lamang dito. So, pag ganito, gagamit tayo ng comma rito. After the word event, then place a space, then conjunctive adverb, therefore, comma, space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, common expressions. He is doing his best, comma, I believe, comma, as you can see. Now, ang common expressions dito ay itong phrase na I believe. Ito ay inserted lamang dito. So, we need to place comma before this common expression, comma, space, and then I believe, and then comma again, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, we know, of course, that he is right. Now, in the sentence, ang atin common expression ay itong fr phrase na of course. Ang ating simple sentence lang talaga dito ay itong we know that he is right. Itong of course ay inserted lang o isiningit lang. Kaya gagamit tayo dito ng comma after no, then space, and then of course, and then comma, space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, contrasting expressions. Example, I want action, not horror movies. Now, itong word na not, ito ang nagsisignify na this sentence is made with a contrasting expression, itong not horror movies. Kaya pag ganito, gagamit na tayo dito ng comma, and then space, and then continuation of the sentence. Next, he deserves praises. Not criticism. Again, itong word na not ang nagsisignify na ito ay contrasting expression or negative expression. So, gagamit tayo dito ng comma. Uh, don't forget to place a space here and then continuation of the sentence. Next, rule number five. Use commas to set off non-essential expressions. Example. Example of non-essential appositive. The task was given to Alfred, our treasurer. Now, notice here, itong our treasurer is an appositive which gives additional information about the noun Alfred. Ito ang ating appositive. Ibig sabihin, itong, itong uh, word na our treasurer ay non-essential expression kasi pwede nating tanggalin siya na hindi na babago ang idea sa sentence. The task was given to Alfred. Period. Wala na. So, wala. Nothing is changed. Walang nabago. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng comma and then ang ating appositive. Next, ito naman ang essential appositive. Example, the task was given to our treasurer, Albert. Now, dito, wala na tayong comma rito. Hindi na tayo kailangan gumamit ng comma kasi itong word or phrase na our treasurer is an essential part of the sentence. Kapag tinanggal natin itong our treasurer, mababago na ang idea sa sentence. Kaya ito ay importante. Pagka ganito na, hindi na tayo gagamit ng comma. Next, non-essential participial phrase. Example, this building erected during the Spanish era is now a tourist attraction. Now, Itong participial phrase natin na erected during the Spanish era, aside from being a participial phrase, ito rin ay gumaganap bilang adjective na nagdi-describe dito sa noun na building. In this case, gagamit tayo dito ng comma, space, and then participial phrase, comma again, and then continuation of the sentence. Now remember, itong erected during the Spanish era also acts as an appositive. An appositive 
that describes the noun building. Kaya gagamit tayo dito ng double comma. Comma after building and then comma after era. Next, non-essential adjective clause. Dito naman, this painting, which is very old, is now in auction. Now, dito, ang ating adjective clause ay which is very old. Now, this clause acts also as an adjective kasi it describes the noun painting. So, and aside from being an, uh, an adjective clause, ito rin ay gumaganap bilang a positive kasi it adds additional information about the noun painting. Kaya pwede nating tanggalin ito nang hindi nababago ang idea sa sentence. Example, this painting is now in auction. Alright, so gagamit tayo dito ng comma, space, don't forget to place a space here, and then the adjective clause, comma again, space, and then continuation of the sentence. Now, if you've learned something in this video, Please don't forget to like, subscribe, click the notification bell in order to be updated, and please share also.